Alrighty guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are uh, currently on our way to Kmart. Gonna go pick up a mop and bucket, a whiteboard, and probably some other little things for the shed. So today on the uh, on the agenda, obviously doing some car things as per usual. Get all the all the stuff we need, and we can um, head to the shed. Alrighty, guys, we're back in the shed. Um, haven't seen this car in a little while. As you can see, we've uh, jacked the front of the car up. We're having some issues with the steering rack. So when the car's jacked up in the air, I struggle to turn the wheels left and right, like lock to lock um, by hand. With the steering wheel, it's not too bad, but it's definitely heavier than it should be. So today, uh, we're going to put in this new rack I've got. And um, yeah, hopefully that sorts our issues. All right. The rack is finally out. Um, so this is the the good new one. So I wrecked a red R31, so this is the steering rack out of this. So this is the old one. I've done the S13 tie rod conversion, S13 rack spaces. Um, and yeah, so pretty well, we're gonna go help a mate out. Put a barra in another Skyline. Um, he's finally ready to put the motor back in. And then while I'm down there to kill two birds, help him out. Uh, while I've got some time, I'll just switch everything from this old rack, switch everything from this old rack onto the new rack, and then we can come back and obviously put it in the car. That's a big boy clutch. <sighs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Alright, so new rack is stripped i put the line back on because we stole it from this one because that one was no good we put the fittings in for our power steering lines now we just got to take passenger side off um, and then we can literally put them on and then the good thing is because we haven't had to touch our tie rod positionings tie rod end positionings um yeah we should be able to pretty well put it back onto the new rack and get a really really good alignment um, and then we can go take it to someone and they might not even have to align it, which is good. So, yeah, definitely going to go get it checked. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's take this side off and we'll put both sides on this rack. Alrighty, guys. So, uh, back in the shed. So, a day later. Um, as you can see, that's the old, uh, old steering rack. So, it's off. We pulled all the good stuff on it, off it, and we've got the new one in the car. A little bit of a pain in the ass, but we finally got it in there. Um, I was having, the only issues I really had was I had to undo the engine mount, jack the barra up. Um, so yeah, jack the barra up. Um, and then I was able to fit that shaft. Uh, that, so I was able to fit the steering rack in just because it's very, very close to that sump. If it's not on it, it's very close to it. And then another thing I had issues with was that shaft, the steering shaft. I was struggling to get it into the bottom part. But we got there in the end and then ended up pretty well dropping the whole K-frame, supporting it with the jack. And then um, once it was obviously in, putting everything back together, tightened everything back up. The car is booked in for an alignment, which is good. So for now, we're going to start it up, see if she starts. And then we can uh, lead the power steering, get that out of the way, make sure there's no leaks. And yeah, really just go from there, which is good. So then we can put the car on the floor. So tonight we'll go down fit some tires i'll have to find where my other ss i'll have to find where my other ssrs are for the rear we'll go put some new tires on there i'm trying out we're actually trying out a wind run uh wind run tire which was super affordable and um they've always got them in stock so at the moment on the rear of the xr31 um i usually run like a salen or a name cane so the Nankangs and the Salins, they're roughly anywhere from about $80 to $90 each. Nankangs are a tad more expensive, but they're just a better tire. Um, but the Salins are almost... Um, Salins are probably the best bang for buck, but um, I couldn't actually get any of the street tire Salins. I could only get the drift ones uh, with the drift compound, but they're a little bit too grippy for probably my setup. Obviously being NA, I don't want too much grip. Especially with the tyre that I am running. It's only a 215, but obviously a 215 
with a drift compound in an NA, it's going to suck a fair bit of uh, wheel speed out and it's going to slide the car down. In drift, it's probably going to be quicker once it's sliding, but uh, to get, it's probably going to take a little bit more to get the car to actually slide. So we'll um, start this up and we'll bleed this cooling uh, we'll, and we'll bleed the power steering system. So let's do it. to drive this thing actually it actually is really cool still so i think the alignment actually stayed pretty close probably got a tad toe out of that side it's probably a tad more toe than i'd like but shit not bad steering was off but i didn't have to pull the uh the rack ends or anything off but I'm gonna go for a cruise in this thing. So I got the SSRs in the back of the car, take them up there, put some wind runs on them, see what they go like. But yeah, we'll uh, go see what Shane's up to. Hey guys, as you would have seen, we sorted out the XR31, put the steering rack in it, dropped it back on the floor, we made sure nothing was leaking, and we're happy with it. So, um, continuing on with the rest of the video, we're going to tackle something that I've wanted to do for a little little while now. So, and it's to do with the R31, the white turbo R31. So, straight off the bat, um, this motor was built roughly 5,000 k's ago, uh, give or take a little bit. Um, but it's obviously, been, it's obviously been sitting for a little while. And um, I bought the car when it was untuned. It just had the cam installed, um, the bigger injectors and whatnot. So it wasn't actually driven with all that stuff in it. So today we're gonna pull the rocket cover off. We'll pull everything off the top of the motor, pull the rocket cover off, and we're gonna go and re the head studs, the ARP head studs that are in this. And the good thing about doing this as well, it's a bit of peace of mind because we're gonna see the springs. We're gonna have a look at, um, you know, obviously the cam in the head, um, and then we can just look at the condition of everything else once that rocket cover's off. So, something I've wanted to do for a little while now, but um, yeah, let's tackle it. Jordan's pulling the couplers off, um, doing some other hose bits, and then, yeah, we can pull that off. I've got a torque, a torque wrench, we've got two of them here. We've got a um, half inch and three eight, so it uh, doesn't really matter on the size. We're gonna make it work. But yeah, let's uh, let's pull everything off the top of this motor, and then we can um, yeah start head talking those head studs. I do have uh, the torque specs from a friend of mine, which is good, so that's out of the way. Um, and then yeah, we can get straight into it because it looks tidy. Like the the engine bay is tidy in this car, um, but the only thing it needs is a few little few little things. But it's clean enough. Ooh. What you've done to the exhaust shield makes it look like, imagine if the whole thing was black. Yeah. yeah, it'd look a lot nicer. But I do like the silver. The only, I like the silver pipes and stuff. I originally wanted to paint them black, but I think if I get um, black couplings or even just get this piece, that whole piece from here to down here welded, so we don't actually see the coupling. So it's just full metal, metal pipe, which would be nice. But first of all, I'm going to take clips off the hoses, undo the clamps, and then we can move these spark, uh, then we can move the leads out the way. Make sure nothing else is in the way. No, I don't think anything else needs to be tampered with too much. Maybe the only thing that might be a pain in the ass is that throttle cable. And um, yeah, that's really about it. All right, so we've uh, pulled the leads off, we've numbered them as well. One, two, three. Pull the rears off now. Again, number them. Uh, throttle cable was easy. You just undo these two little nuts. There's two little nuts that go either side of the throttle cable. Um, just undo one of those and then pull that whole thing off. Um, that vacuum hose, or I suppose the vacuum hose from the intake, is off. The only other thing that's going to be a pain, hopefully it's easy to get on and off, is that head drain, which goes down to the sump. But that shouldn't be too hard. I'll just crack that off. It's just an AN. We will have full access to the rocket cover. Yeah. Beautiful. You might have to we can maybe pry it if you want. There we go. Yep, all clear, come up. 
Boom. Good effort. What's this? So that's a rear drain. Um, because the RB30s, they've got a, a thing of filling up the head full of oil very, very quickly, and they struggle to get it down back into the sump. So this motor has a rear drain, which is not in use. And then it's also got the, it's also got like the front drain, which is in use, which runs down, which uses this fitting here and runs straight down into the, um, into the sump. All right, so today what we are doing, we're looking at our head studs. So let's have a quick look at these off camera and then I'll uh, update you with what's gonna happen. That accelerator mount's getting uh, primed and then we don't really know, I don't really know if I wanna go black or the silver, so. Black. <sighs> He's saying black, but it's more of like a matte. But, but, the... but it comes off your exhaust shield, which is black. Yeah, that's a, and uh, you plan on painting your rocket cover black. Yeah, you're right. You are you are right. Or po get it polished. No. It goes that would look hot polished. polished. Show us your polished pipes, Poppy. Pretty well just going to check um, and go through the sequence that ARP have said to. So we've got our torque wrench set. So we have our torque wrench set at uh, 100 newton meters, which works out to be roughly, roughly 75 um, foot pounds of torque. So converting that to newton meters, it's roughly about 100 newton meters. So we're gonna go over the, so these have already had their final stages, obviously they will go that pretty well. I think they go in like 40s, 80s, and then 100 your final stage, or 90 degree in your final stage. But obviously this has already been done because the motor's been running, tuned and whatnot. So we're going over the whole motor to make sure it's actually been done and properly because since then it's had a few, since then it's had a few heat cycles, uh, it's obviously been tuned, and then today is just a bit of preventative maintenance. We'll start off from number one, so pretty well. Looking at our sheet here, it's telling us we want to start at, it's telling us we want to start at number one, which is here. Um, so start off the middle. So I'll start here. So that's torqued. We go number two, which is directly above it. All right, then we're going to the left. Number three, and then just above it, four, going over to the right hand side of the middle, number five, same thing, just straight above, six, we go over to seven, eight, and back over to this side to go number nine. 10, going to the front of the motor, number 11, Twelve. and this one's a bit of shit to get to, 13, and lucky last, 14, there we go, so, these were all correctly torqued, and that was purely the main reason of pulling the whole rocket cover off this head. Just to go over those, and just to make sure that we had our double row valve springs, obviously had our ARP head studs, and now that's just confirmed, so it's very exciting. How clean is it in there though? Fantastic. It's very clean. And manufacturing new head bolts. And easy as that, it's back together. So it took about 10 minutes probably to take it off. 10 minutes of painting that, uh, that little bracket, which does look right. You're all right, Jordan. The black does look all right. Yeah, thank you, mate. Actually, I don't know. It's wet and he goes and grabs onto it, ruins my fucking painting yeah. job. Yeah, well, he's keen to, he's keen to get yeah, out of here, yeah, so yeah. I want to take him for a drive. So if he didn't rush me, yeah, it would have fine. All right, let's start this thing up, see if it still runs. Definitely runs, definitely starts, sounds good, but you would have heard an exhaust leak. Oh, not an exhaust leak, maybe exhaust rattle. I don't know how well it picked up throughout the uh, throughout the video, but it's definitely got one. Uh, yesterday I went for a bit of a drive, obviously, and we snapped the exhaust strap for the rear muffler, so we went to go grab one today, so we're gonna install that quickly. And then, yeah, we're gonna probably end out this video. Um, in the next video, guys, you're gonna be watching me 
and a couple other mates drift this uh, this old girl. So watch out for that. Drift practice It's probably going to be wet. It's going to be fun, and um, there's going to be plenty of cars out there for me to uh, for me to watch and record. So drift practice It's actually drift night. It's going to be sick. So. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe for more. You know where the 31 content's going to be. So, love that motorsports. If you don't follow on Instagram, go do it. I'll drop the link here. And then, yeah, have a wicked day, guys. I'll see you in the next one.